I'm Lisa from BudgetEquestrian.com where I share different ideas with you for you to make the most of the time that you have with your horse. And since it's springtime, I figured a lot of us are going to be out riding more. So I thought it would be a good idea to go over a basic first aid kit with you. So if you're just getting a horse or if you don't have a first aid kit, I'm going to kind of share with you some different things that you can buy either online or even at Walmart, places like that. For, to put together your own first aid kit for your horse. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about first aid is because my daytime job, I am a registered nurse and I work in an orthopedic department. Orthopedics is basically anything having to do with bones and muscles. And I just happen to be a foot nurse. So I see lots of foot injuries, sometimes horse related, but more often than that, I see a lot of wounds. And a wound can be devastating and it could be career ending. So when a wound happens, it's important to have the right tools so that you can treat it. Now, I'm not a veterinarian, I don't claim to be, but I think with my experience as a nurse, some of that will apply to horses as well. And I have used all of the stuff that's in this container I've actually used on Ethan before and Frisbee too. But what's cool about first aid is it can be for horses, it can be for dogs, it can be for people. Pretty much bleeding is bleeding and getting the bleeding to stop and treating a wound are pretty similar no matter what species it is. Might be different for like fish, I don't know. But I just wanted to share with you some different things that you can do to put together a first aid kit for your horse and you possibly as well. So the first thing is the container. This actually came from Walmart and I think it was six bucks and it was full of different size Tupperware. And I didn't really need the big box, but I was like, that would make a really cool first aid kit. So I took it. Lid pops off. And first thing I have in here is a stethoscope. And a stethoscope is important because number one, you can check your horse's heart rate, which it's a lot easier to do with this than it is to try and find his pulse. That, that's more challenging. And this makes it really easy to listen for gut sounds. So I think I got this, um, I think this was from Amazon. It was like six bucks. It wasn't very expensive. It's not a super duty, wonderful stethoscope, but you can hear with it. So six bucks, I leave it out in the barn. Two of my favorite things to have, number one is called Wound Coat. And this is by Farnham. And what you do is you just, it's a spray on wound dressing. So if your horse gets a cut, um, you just spray this on it and it's an antiseptic and it'll clean it out. This, and actually has been used a lot, this is Wonder Dust. This is wound powder. And what this is, it's a coagulant. What that means is if your horse is bleeding or if he has a cut, if you put this on, it will stop the bleeding. And there's nothing really fancy in here. It is charcoal. It says contains activated charcoal. And it also helps to prevent um, proud flesh. And proud flesh is just tons of, tish, uh, tons of tissue that grows from a wound, which can be really annoying. But you can use this on open cuts, surface wounds, granulated tissue, proud flesh. I use this a lot when Ethan gets hurt on something because seeing blood, it's not really my favorite thing. And I can usually put this on him and he tolerates it okay. And it helps to protect the wound. Something else I have is Corona ointment. And you can use this on horses, cows, dogs, cats, legs, head, face. And what it does is if your horse gets a scratch, you can just put some of this on it. Just put a little bit on it. It's really thick. It's like a thick lotion that it's not even going to come out. It smells good. But it helps to promote natural healing of cuts. And... It just, it works. And if there's like really dry, cracking skin, you can put this on it too. Corona is really neat. 
And then I just have like an old, this was an old leg wrap, but I've used it before on Ethan when he's had his really big injury. Ethan had a huge injury, I think it was, it was over a year ago, actually it was last March. And I do have an article on my website and I actually have pictures of like when it happened, a month later, and then three months later. But this, these are nice to have because you can wrap it around a wound in case it's bleeding, if it's like on a leg, or you can apply pressure with it. Something that I think everyone should have in their tack room woo, is a headlamp. I like headlamps better than flashlights because you just put it on your head, you can still have both of your hands free. You can find these at the dollar store. You can find them at Walmart for a dollar. This one was a little bit more expensive. I think it was six bucks. But a headlamp is really nice to have. It's a great tool so you can get the light right where you want it to be while you're looking at whatever it is you're looking at. I have a couple of different sizes of cast padding. And what this does is it just helps to make a really big bulky dressing. I have a hoof pick. Actually, it's a brand new hoof pick. No, almost brand new. But I think I like the hoof picks with the brushes on the ends. Um, and it's got like a little scraper here and it's got the nice hoof pick. These are great and I think your first aid kit should have a hoof pick. Kind of makes sense, don't you think? I have some different swab sticks. So these are betadine and these are chloroprep, which is chlorhexidine. So chlorhexidine is cool because it's antimicrobial, antibacterial, and wherever you put it on, whatever it comes into contact with, it will stay active and will continue to kill for 72 hours. So that's really nice. Betadine, on the other hand, betadine is nice too. You can use it as an antiseptic, but more importantly, the reason I use it is for a drying agent. So let's say that you have a wound that's oozing and it's just really wet. This will help to dry out the wound. So I like betadine swabs for that. I have some humongous zero form gauze and what this is is these are huge sheets of gauze that have Vaseline in them so they've been impregnated with Vaseline. They don't stick so if there's like bleeding or stuff that needs to come out of the wound this will allow it to come through the dressing and go into your other dressing and then if the wound dries out it won't stick when you peel it off. So if you've ever seen Telfa pads, the ones that say they're no stick, they, they do stick. So I don't really care for Telfa pads um, on people or animals. That's just my personal opinion. I don't like them. And it traps moisture against the skin where this will help to let it, it's breathable, I guess is a good way to say it. So Curad makes these their zero form petroleum dressing. So those are helpful to have too. And with horses, the big sheets work better. Ooh, I have a couple of polo wraps, and these are the knit ones, so they're really, really stretchy. Um, they work good either if I can wrap it around a tail or put it on a leg that has an injury. I have some Curlex gauze, and this is, it's four and a half yards long. This is really absorbent, and it helps to make a nice bulky dressing. So let's say that your horse has a leg injury. You could use that on the injury itself if, if there's a cut. Then you can wrap it with the gauze. Then you wrap it with the cast padding, which is gonna make it a really big bulky dressing. And then you can either wrap it with a polo, coban or vet wrap, or an ace wrap. And ace wraps come in different sizes. So I think it's good to have a couple different size ace wraps in your first aid kit as well. Not only as a backup to a polo wrap for your horse, but what if you got injured? What if you twisted your ankle or sprained your ankle? You could wrap your ankle or your wrist with one of these ace wraps. And I think I only have one roll of Coban in here right now, but that's about all that'll fit in here. And this is called Coflex. It has many names, Coflex, Coban, Vet Wrap. And what this is, is a dressing that acts like tape. So it's very stretchy and you can make a really nice compression dressing with this. And what that does, a compression dressing, it 
compresses. So if you have a lot of bleeding and you can put a compression dressing on it, that will help to stop that bleeding. So got to have a lot of vet wrap. And usually you can find it on sale for like 99 cents or 79 cents a roll, depending on the time of year. So when it goes on sale, I buy a lot of it. When I bought this, it was $1.59 at Dover salary. And you can never have enough gloves. So I just happen to have a couple pair of gloves in here, but I have a box of gloves in my tack room too. But these are just nitrile gloves. And they're nice because you can put dressings on, you can put ointments and dressings and stuff on without touching it. Uh, MTG, I use that on Ethan because he has sarcoids on his neck. So I use these gloves so I don't have to put the MTG on my hands because it smells really bad. It smells really bad like sulfur. So gloves are always good to have. And you also wanna consider having some hand sanitizer. So this is alcohol. So worst case scenario, if you didn't have anything to clean out a wound or wash a wound, you could use hand sanitizer. However, keep in mind this will burn because it's alcohol. But if you are trying to dress a wound or something or working with your horse and he gets an injury, it's good to try to get your hands as clean as you can before you start working on the wound. Have some hand sanitizer. These are really inexpensive. These were like, I think this was 75 cents and this came in a huge kit and it was probably $15 for the kit. Or you can even get like the pump size, which is what we usually have all over, but I like to have something inside my first aid kits. And those are like three bucks at Walmart. You also wanna have just some random rags. So these were old t-shirts that became rags for a first aid kit. Some medical tape. And some gauze. Gauze is really important to have. And this is four by four gauze. And I don't know how many is in here. So you can never have enough gauze, in my opinion. And this gauze is not sterile, so it's just clean. But there are 200 gauze four by four pieces in this container. But if something happens at the barn and you have a medical emergency with your horse, you can go through this in one session. So having a lot of gauze, I think, is a good idea. I have some little saline bullets. These aren't little. These are kind of the bigger saline bullets. But these are helpful. You could use this to like wash out an eye. You could use this to flush out a wound. And I think they're just help handy to have. If you don't have like saline bullets like these, you can get saline solution for contact lenses and that will work pretty much the same. Just make sure you get the normal saline solution. It should say 0.9% NaCl, which is the standard for normal saline. You wanna make sure don't get the contact cleaner. That would be horrible because a lot of the contact cleaners, they actually have peroxide in them. So if you were to spray peroxide into your eye or your horse's eye, that would be horrible. So just plain old saline solution for contact lenses. And you can get the one that's for sensitive eyes. That one is probably a little bit more gentle. Or you can find the saline bullets. An ABD pad, which stands for an abdominal pad. And this opens up, it's six by nine inches. So if there was a big gash or a cut, you could cover it with this ABD pad. Hopefully, you wouldn't need anything bigger than that, but maybe you'd need a couple ABD pads just in case. This is really important, a couple pair of banded shears. So I prefer this style. This is a Lister type bandage scissors, and I just like them. They work better. They come in all different sizes. This is a five and a half inch size. They have seven inch size, seven and a half inch, eight inch, I use eight inch ones when I'm at work because I like those, they cut through big heavy dressings. And this is another alternative and they work pretty good too. These are like EMT shears and you can get these really inexpensively on Amazon or Jeffers, um, places like that. But what's nice about bandage scissors versus regular scissors is it's got a little guard on it so that so that you're not going to cut through like 
skin or anything like that. You can literally cut something off and you don't have to worry that you're gonna cut the person or the horse because you're protected by the blade being shorter on this side than it is on that side. Very cool invention, whoever made it. And while we're on tools, pair tweezers, it's good to have. And this is something that I have, this is more for people. So like the Wonder Dust is for horses. This is called Wound Seal and this is for people. And this is a coagulant, so this helps to stop bleeding. And so like if you were to cut yourself pretty bad at the barn, you could clean it off with all of your first aid stuff. And then if it wouldn't stop bleeding, put some of this on it and put a pressure dressing on it to stop the bleeding. And last but certainly not least is a digital thermometer. And it still works. It's good to check your thermometers and make sure they still work. So this thermometer is just, it's a standard digital thermometer. I got it for five bucks. It's very nice to have several of these so you can check your horse's temperature. I think it's a good idea to routinely check your horse's temperature so that way you know what his normal range is. And when you're checking a horse's temperature, you're going to check it in his butt. Yep, you are. So what you'll do is put a little bit of Vaseline on there and stick it under his tail. When you're doing that, make sure you have, like I have this red ribbon tied on and don't walk away from the thermometer because what'll happen is your horse will suck it in. And that would be horrible to lose a thermometer up your horse's rear end. So keep that in mind. You should, you can also probably, you could also put a clip on it and clip this to his tail while the thermometer is reading. It doesn't take very long, probably a minute or so, one to three minutes to read a temperature, but it's always good to have that so you can tell if your horse is under the weather. And so if you do have to call the vet, you can give him the important information like his temperature, his heart rate, does he have gut sounds? All of that stuff is really important to know how to do. And to kind of go along with that, something else that's really important is keeping track of your horse's records. So having some way to keep track of you know, especially if your horse is not at your home or if you're away from home and someone has to come help your horse, having their medical information, their background, your emergency contact information is really, really, really important. And it's peace of mind. It's basically an insurance policy. So if they're on any medications, um, how often you've wormed them, you can keep track of that all of their vaccinations to make sure they're up to date on their vaccinations, any, their routine hoof care, dental care, um, basically all kinds of information. And what's really cool about this is you can actually go to my website and I'm gonna have this so that you can actually print off. It's basically an equine health record for you and your horse. So that's a lot of stuff that I went over today. But I think it's really important for us all to have first aid kits in our barns. This by no means is all encompassing. This is basically one little first aid kit that I have. I have several first aid kits in my barn for big emergencies, small emergencies, because I don't think you can ever have too much first aid stuff. All of this stuff will be used at some time or another. So I think it's better to be prepared and have this stuff and hopefully not need it rather than to need it and not have it. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, sometimes on Saturdays too. Again, thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay passionate and enjoy your ride.